It was Christmas on the island of Sodol. All the engines were working hard. Thomas and Toby were busy carrying people and parcels up and down the branch line. Everyone was happy. Only the coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, were complaining. It's always the same before Christmas, they groaned. We feel so full, we feel so full. Oh, come on, said Thomas. Where's your festive spirit? Christmas Day is almost here. By the side of the track was a lonely little cottage with a familiar figure waving to them. It's Mrs. Kindly, whistled Thomas. Peep, peep, happy Christmas. Thomas always felt better for seeing her. Christmas just wouldn't be Christmas without Mrs. Kindly. When work was over, Thomas went to see the other engines. All their coats had been polished. Hup, said Gordon, just look at us. Your driver will have to work fast to get you as smart as us. Never mind that, replied Thomas. I've something important to say. Do you realize it's a whole year since Mrs. Kindly saved us from a nasty accident? You remember when she was ill in bed and... Yes, of course, interrupted Edward. You told us how she waved her red dressing gown out of her window to warn you about a landslide ahead. And you and Toby gave her presents. Percy joined in and Sir Topham Hatt sent her to Bournemouth to get better. But, said James and Henry together, the rest of us have never thanked her properly. Exactly, said Thomas. So now I think we should all give her a special Christmas party. Everyone was getting very excited. The drivers felt sure that Sir Topham Hatt would agree, as indeed he did. The engines were all busy making plans when silence fell. Sir Topham Hatt had bad news. The weather's changed badly. Mrs. Kindly is snowed up. Toby says he'll help to rescue her. You must help too, Thomas. There's no party unless you do. Thomas hated snow, but he said bravely, I'll try, sir. We must rescue her. We must. There's a good engine. You and Toby will manage splendidly. But Thomas charged the snowdrifts fiercely. Sometimes he swept them aside. Sometimes they stuck fast and the men had to loosen them. But at the cutting near the cottage, they could go no further. Look at that, exclaimed Thomas's fireman. Peep, 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 here we are, whistled Thomas. An answering wave came from an upstairs window. Then they heard a familiar sound. That's Terence, said Thomas, he's come to help too. Sure enough, Terence had a snowplow and was working hard to clear a path to the railway line and safety. At long last, the rescue was complete. Piercy took the tired workman home. Terence said goodbye to Mrs. Kindly and promised to take care of their cottage as he watched them all set off. The engines made good time. No more snow had fallen, but the yard was dark. Thomas's heart sank. Suddenly, all the lights went on. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Well done, said Sir Topham Hatt. I'm really proud of you all. Mrs. Kindly especially thanked the smaller engines. Thomas and Toby are all friends, she said. And now, Percy, you are my friend too. Percy was very pleased. Three cheers for Mrs. Kindly, he called. Beep, beep, beep. They all whistled. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, fella happy you yee Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends thought it was the best Christmas ever, and Mrs. Kylie could think of nowhere she would rather live than here with them on the island of Sodor.